Hi, fashion dolls. I am back. I am back. I am back. Oh, my goodness. Ah. Uh, okay. I see it. 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 Okay. Welcome, welcome, fashion dolls. We are back. We are back. We are back. I took a break. I took a little hiatus, but I am back, fashion dolls. Our very special guest today is a writer actor, singer, and model, and he is here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Sean Red. Are you on your laptop, Sean, or are you on your phone? Because it's not going to let me join. It's not going to let you join if you're on your um laptop. You got to be on your phone. Because I just tried to add you, and it wouldn't let me add you. Um, I know you guys have been wondering, where have I been? I've been taking a break. I took a break. I've been posting lots of fashion and things. Um, make sure you guys stay tuned. We've got some great guests coming up in April as well as next week. We were actually supposed to have a panel. Okay, let me see. Let me see if it'll try that. There we go. It's saying invite. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to the dollhouse, my hey. love. How are you? How's it going? How are you? I'm doing <laughs> excellent. It is such a pleasure to meet Likewise. you. Likewise, thank you. I know we were talking about this for about what I think a month or so now. Yes, yeah. I think it was <laughs> in January, February. It some, January, yeah, it was something. February. It was something like that. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> okay, welcome, welcome. So, how's your 2022 been thus far? Because we know that it's been hectic with this pandemic and everything that has been going on. Um, you know, to be honest with you, like I, I can honestly say, I feel like I'm a little blessed. I feel like I've been uh, constantly working, you know, whether it's with shoots, I've done my first uh, New York Fashion Week. So honestly, I've been feeling really good. Okay, <laughs> okay. So fingers crossed it's, for more opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> and you also released your hit single as well too which we'll get into throughout this interview but it's good to know that you've been doing well and we'll talk a little bit about your new york fashion week as well too so tell us how did you get your start into modeling and doing music how did you get your start um honestly it's funny because like with modeling it all started during the pandemic so basically what happened was i was i was just taking like regular pictures that we take in the house when we feel good like that's the only thing we could do during the pandemic. So I was just taking a bunch of pictures and then um, a photographer reached out to me and was like, hey, would you like to shoot? So obviously I was like unfamiliar with the art of like modeling and stuff like that. So I brought a friend with me. And then ever since then, I was just kind of getting like, you know, I was connecting with different people, doing a little bit of work, but it was like nonstop. Like it was like almost like once it started, it just like kind of never stopped. And I kind of found a way to bring like my music involved in it. And that also made like my album artwork a lot better because now more comfortable in front of the camera and how to kind of like deliver different facial expressions. So it started kind of like clashing in, in a good way. <laughs> okay. Okay. So with this passion of music, who are some of your favorite musical inspirations? Because when I was listening to your um, hit single one last time, it was giving me very much Usher. So he definitely has to be some, one of your um, musical no, influences. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love Usher. Usher is definitely one of my favorite um artist hands down um i think like my top two vocally or i would say my top three the ones i like i admire the most would be obviously usher mariah carey and cisco honestly mm, those are okay. like those are like my go-to uh vocal people <laughs> so writing for you what type of element do you like when you're writing when you're in your element and you're writing your music because i know Erica Badu, I've seen her write. I've seen Faith Evans. I've seen so many others like to be an element, even when they're in the recording studio. For you, on average, recording your music and writing, do you like a lot of people in the studio with you? Are you the type that's okay to say mood, an element? Like, what do you like when you're writing your music? I like to be, but I like to be alone. Honestly, because usually if I'm in the writing process, I'm inspired by something or there was something that kind of happened to me that made me want to write. So now I kind of like be alone. And I, I actually learned that walking helps you kind of like helps your mind kind of like, and I would always, I would always walk when I needed to write a song. So whenever I was like, like, you know, inspired, I wanted to kind of get my feelings out. I would always go for a walk. I'll hear something, I'll record it on my phone and I'll start writing. And, but as far as like the studio process go, like once I start kind of putting everything down, I really don't like that. Only like me, my engineer, 
in there and that's it. Like, to be honest with you, I'm not like the type of person I like to be with a group of people. Cause like, I like to kind of like, um, just like really get lost in it and try to like show as much emotion as I can. So usually when I have people around, it's a little bit of a distraction. <laughs> All right, all right. So, acting wise, would you could you see yourself getting behind the lens with acting, producing, directing as well? Oh, uh, definitely. Um, I think I, I definitely need a little bit more work on the acting department, <laughs> but it's definitely something I'm, I'm like I'm not afraid of. Like I definitely would like to venture off to as much as I can. I think as as you know, anyone who knows who follow me, I I try to do as much as I can, <laughs> even if it means I have to okay. kind of like throw so much in one day. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this hit single one last time. Tell us about the inspiration for writing the song <laughs> and the recording process, and exactly where did the inspiration pull from? It's like originally I wrote the song to kind of be like an homage to people that aren't with us anymore. And the thing about One Last Time is kind of like, you know, when I when you listen to it, I want people to think about anyone that's not near them. So whether it's uh, someone you lost or whether it's a friend that moved away, it's, that was kind of like the inspiration behind it. Um, and obviously I have like a big family, so I've lost a lot of family members and a lot of friends. So the original idea of the song was about not being near someone that's in heaven, right? And then as I was kind of like recording the song, and then I was kind of going through different emotions with different, you know, different things while I was talking to friends, I kind of made the song kind of, I try to make it as, again, as universal as I possibly can. Um, the funny part about recording it is that it only took me like, I think 30 minutes. <laughs> because I, as soon as I wrote it, I was already like in the emotion. I had I a message in my producer and I was like, I want to I want to record. So being that I was already in that emotion, it was kind of easy for me to go in there and kind of like bring it, bring it to life. <laughs> and it is an absolutely beautiful song, might I add. I was listening to it while I was in the chair getting my makeup and stuff done for this interview. And it is a beautiful, beautiful song. Thank you so much. So, and by the way, you look beautiful. <laughs> Got thank the hair, you. the makeup, I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout outs to Melanie. Thank you, Mel. Mel is responsible for that because I took a hiatus. Um, it's funny you mentioned we've lost so many people because throughout this entire pandemic, it's been difficult for a lot of people. You know, that separation anxiety with being away from family Absolutely. and friends and things like that. So how have you been managing with that? Because I know for you as a entertainer, as a singer, as a writer, as an actor, it's you, you have to go out and perform and do all of these things, photo shoots. And you've mentioned walking New York Fashion Week, which I know definitely was a big experience for you. So what's running through your mind when you're doing these things? And do you ever get separation anxiety away from your family? Um, you know, originally when the pandemic first started, definitely. Um, and it, mm -hmm. honestly, I have family that lives in my apartment building. But because I was so paranoid that I was like afraid to go anywhere, near anybody. So even though I, I had the the access to just kind of go upstairs and go say hi to people, um, I was too afraid. Like I have a friend that lives like four blocks away and I was afraid to go sit with her. And, and you know, to me, it was all fear. Like that was my whole thing. So, and then of course, like I missed everybody. And I think that if, even my friends, I might've saw a few people like in spurts here and there. And then like, um, there was one moment when all my friends got together was when I shot the video for my song Loud. And that was the first time we all were together for like months. And we were like, we were happy, but we were still kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like, we were still like a little afraid. Um, and even like you said, like with the performing and stuff, like I missed being in front of a crowd. Like I love performing. So my first performance after the pandemic, I felt like, so nervous. I was like, I didn't even feel like, like with the connection still be the same. Like, you know, do I have to like kind of shake that stuff off? Because a year of not performing, you kind of feel like, you, you know, you have to kind of get back into it. Because like now you because you've only been in the studio, you can find your voice more in the studio, but not find it more with the connection with the crowd. So that was definitely a challenge, but it's starting to kind of. <laughs> like it's getting. Okay, <laughs> okay. And it's definitely was awkward for a lot of performers because when either. Like. The, there wasn't a full audience like it was just the performer on, on stage and the band it wasn't an audience so i know you get crowd reaction you're used to getting that crowd reaction and the audience cheering you on and things like it's an energy thing for performers out here so it seems awkward to be performing and doing a show and then there's no audience you know 
had to stay back due to these precautions. And a lot of talk shows, platforms, we're starting to see things are starting to open back up. And speaking of opening back up, you walked New York Fashion Week. And I'm a fashion girl, as y'all can tell. I love change. Every issue of Vogue, Hopper's Bazaar, I, I just love fashion. So what was it like for you? Because I know backstage, I've got to kind of see it firsthand what the models had to do for prepping for the show and things like that. I know it's a lot of buttons and it's, it's chaotic backstage. So what was it like for you walking for New York Fashion Week? To be honest with you, I had, I think I probably had like the smoothest experience I think I could have had. Um, Everyone was on time. I got my makeup done. I was early. Um, you know, it was pretty much like it was like a, like a full event, but there was enough models there. Like backstage was not chaotic, surprisingly. Like we all knew what we were wearing beforehand. We knew like they they were really like went over in detail what we had to do. So I felt confident in terms of there was gonna be nothing that just randomly pops up. So it was just a fun experience. But my adrenaline when I finally came down those steps, and then like all the cameras were flashing. I was like, oh, this is real. Like this is like I'm. I'm in a moment right now. So it was it was a lot of fun. It was like, obviously my heart was pounding because honestly, I'm not like really runway. I've always been like more like behind the camera as far as like just taking pictures and, and stuff. But when you're walking, you have to kind of sell it. Like you want to be that sexy person, you kind of kind of have to keep that face and bring it. And it was like, to me, that was like my main thing. I wanted to look right. I wanted to give good face <laughs> and not, and obviously not trick because <laughs> I'm, I'm clumsy. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure you executed it effortlessly because we've seen some of the photos that you took for Ann Andrew and just your whole page is just like a fashion magazine. Every shot that I've seen, especially the one with the white, um, the black and white and the all white, I was just like, wow, this is beautiful. And then the, the blue background and then the one where you have the peach color background. Oh my goodness, it, your whole Instagram is like a fashion magazine. Thank you. So do you have any input in some of the photo shoots? Um, some I do actually. Um, a lot of times, um, whenever it's a collaboration, usually I'll like look at inspiration I've seen elsewhere or even some of the stuff that they've done. I'm like, okay, what can we do now to like elevate it? Like a lot of my favorite photos are actually from the collaborations where I got to put an input in. So yeah, so like a lot of um, it was actually I think the last three I posted. Uh, if you see like anything with like a shiny background, that was me and a photographer Tim. We actually brought that idea together. We actually shot that at my apartment. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and it looks like a high fashion editorial. I Thank mean, you. it looks amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> so could you see could you see yourself flipping through the pages of Hopper's Bazaar or GQ? Could you see yourself? What would you manifest in the future that's, with you and modeling working in the fashion world? That's the goal. Like honestly, like that's like one of my biggest goals. Like I want to be able to like go in the supermarket, know what magazine I was in, and like, you know, even though I have to buy like three. Like I, I just, that's like my my goals in terms of like, you know, the modeling and fashion industry. Like I want to be inside of like a popular magazine. So Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask this question because some of your shots are very provocative. What did mama have to say? What did mama have to say about some of the shoots? You, you know what? My mother is probably the most supportive person. I think that she see how much hard work I put into like, um, you know, put my body together and like all the effort I do into music and everything. So she's always like, like I used to give her warnings. Like I, I did something kind of sexy. Like I just like, show her beforehand, but now she's so used to it. Like she'll just take it, like it, share it. <laughs> So like she all she's right. all, she's all with it. <laughs> okay, all right, and and as soon as baby, as soon as those checks start rolling in, Mama be okay. <laughs> I think it was um, our friends or somebody who said something that works, you know, that does adult work, that does adult modeling, and I think it was either our quiz or someone that said something. Um, and baby, when when them checks started rolling in, my mama got she got very happy. Before she was against it, she didn't like me doing it, but now Mama seen the checks. Yeah, mothers are like that though. Even for me, you know, being a woman and wearing certain outfits on the show some of the stuff would be revealing and my mom would be like all right yeah you show up a little bit too much <laughs> so my mom she gets that i'm like i have to up the end just a little bit you know yeah. to make it look high fashion um it was one shot that i did and it wasn't it wasn't by no photography i just put my phone on a stand and I set the timer and everything. The one with the back with the backless black dress that you guys have seen and I had the black Bob haircut. Um 
Yeah, my mom seen it. She was like, all right, uh, the, show it a little bit too much. So, um, yeah, moms can be that way, but they'll once they see those checks and those dollar signs start rolling in and they get that house and all that other stuff, they they just like, go ahead, do you. Yeah, they, they love it. it it's funny because, like, even my mom, I think, like, she knew, like, even the artists that I liked, I, like, growing up, they were always, you know, sexy. So I think it's her, it wasn't a shock that one. I was like, I had a jacket. I was like, let's have it up or should I have it down? Like, I don't like that. <laughs> right. And um, back in the day, I mean, you had so many, fa if you want to talk about fashion photographers, Arthur Elger, who's shot for uh, Vogue magazine. Um, some of the shots that he's done, Irvin Penn and so many others, they would make it uh, a little sexy. They would make the models, you know, a certain way, like, um, there was one shot with Linda Evangelista and uh, Christy Turlington. And I think it was Linda as dressed as a man and it was Christy dressed as a woman. And it was a very provocative shoot. So, you know, if you guys haven't seen it, you have to go on Google. Google it. It, I've seen it scrolling down my Pinterest because I'm always looking for hair and beauty inspiration. That's where I get a lot of my inspiration from. And I seen it. I said, oh my God, this is so immaculate. So yeah, Irvin Penn, Shout out to Ike Taraj. She says, I know this guy. Nice to see you both. You too, nice Ike. To it's been you. a minute. How are you doing? Uh, we're talking about photography and, you know, sex appeal and, you know, sex sells. Let's be honest. Sex sells. So, you know, the sexier the photo is, the sexier the piece of garment that you're wearing attracts and pulls someone in. It'll make them be like, okay, I want this dress or I want what she's wearing. Or, I want those pair of underwear that he's wearing. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So, yeah, sex sells. So it's about selling it and the garments in the fashion world. Exactly. Um, I even had this and olive who's worked with um calvin klein back in the day um you might have seen him on tyler perry's for better or for worse he was telling me you know when he did some photo shoots um it was very provocative and i feel like that's how most people like, start honestly i feel like that's how most people start it's um and i actually worked with a very talented photographer on um, set and he told me that um photographers get noticed by their body the body work that's like the thing that draws everyone in and to me, there's a way where you can be sexy and push the envelope without, you know, without crossing that line. And again, people that do cross the line, I respect you because everyone plays their part in the world. <laughs> you know, you need the ones who are going to really bring it and the ones who are going to leave a little mystery. And I think that, you know, everyone plays their part. But, you know, most photographers always tell you, like, even if they're doing high fashion, they, like, they always kind of like to do the, the body work, the artistic news, because that's what draw people. Someone just gave me a compliment. Thank you. I think it says Tarzana. Fisher Tarzana. Oh, I love it, Tarzana. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, welcome. If you're just coming in, my new viewer, um, our new viewers, your followers, so both, it's a mix of both of our followers, and they're enjoying the conversation. But this is, needs to be had, you know, because some people question when they're flipping through the pages of Vogue magazine. My grandmother is even questioning. She's just like, well, why this girl got, why is she dressed? <laughs> um, it's to sell the garment. It's, it's to throw you off a little bit. So, you know, it's you're going to see things that you're not used to seeing in the fashion world. And that's how it should be. It's, it's beautiful. It's eye catching. And that's what it does. You know, um, it was one picture. Um, I would remember watching a documentary on Anna Wintour and Vogue magazine. And it was the woman's lips. And then it had a B on the woman's lips. And she was wearing this orange color. Y'all know which photo I'm talking about. And she had this orangish color lipstick on, and it was a B on the top of her lips. So Vogue magazine is always pushing the envelope with having models do all of these crazy things, yeah. crazy poses. And it gets us talking. Um, yes. And then there was one where they were talking about eyebrows. And this was in the 1991 issue. It had Claudia Schiffer. And it was a green background. And she was wearing this brown suede jacket and a, like a very colored lip. Um, I was flipping through that one and they had a woman's face and it had a snake on the side of it. So they were talking about eyebrows and shaping eyebrows. So they know how to grab your attention, even when it comes to the beauty part of that magazine. So fashion, art, beauty, they all go hand in hand. And you're going to be seeing 
you're going to see models do things that are out of the norm, you know, when it comes to photography. Um, even when I was looking through some of Versace's old ad campaigns, um, it's one where I think Naomi Campbell has her back kind of turned. And then Linda is literally, she bent forward and she has her legs, her head between her legs. And she's advertising the Versace pants. So yeah, I'll post that one at the end of the show if you guys don't know to, which photo. I need to see that one, about. definitely. <laughs> yeah. So Vogue is known, the fashion world is known for pushing the envelope just a little bit. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So we talked a little bit about fashion and photography. What's next for Sean in the future? What is next for Sean? What do you see yourself manifesting in your career? Because you've already established a big to support you in this interview, 100%. You know, honestly, like I'm, how can I put it? I'm in a place where I'm just trying to keep pushing. So um, I know I have, like, obviously a long-term goal is to go as far as I possibly can. I, I want to see my name on Billboard. I want to be everything, I, you know, I, I aspire to be. But, like, right now, what I'm doing is I'm taking everything one step at a time. I'm, I'm going to keep hustling. Like, I have um, a new song coming out like really soon. I actually just shot the video for it. We, we did the artwork and everything. So you, I'm going to trust me, you'll be the first person to know. And I'll give you the first exclusive look on everything. But uh, this is actually the first time I'm talking about it. So I have a new song coming out actually next month along with a video. So I don't know if I'm going to do like a full project or I just want to kind of do singles for right now. But um, I'm definitely, like I said, every day is a hustle for me. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep striving. I'm going to keep connecting with people, connecting with you, connecting with, you know, so many people right now. So like that's, that's my goal. <laughs> All right, all right. So we just got to stay tuned. I can't wait to see the visuals because we've seen some of the visuals for your hit single and the cover, and it's absolutely beautiful. Again, that immaculate photography is all about the artist's eye Thank and you. what works. So, all right, fashion dolls, we're going to get into our games with Sean, and then we're going to take some questions from the audience. The first game is called The Rapid Five, and Sean has to tell me five things that he can't live without. The second one is going to be called The Rapid Five. No, not The Rapid Five. I just said that. <laughs> uh, it is going to be called Turn the Tables, and this is where my guests get to ask me questions uncensored and unfiltered, as many as they want, so I have no idea what Sean is going to ask me. My heart is beating fast, but we're going to start off with the rapid five. What are five things that Sean can't live without? So I cannot live without, this is going to sound bad, my phone, only because of my music. <laughs> Um, if they take my service away, just keep my music. My phone, I need coffee. Like, I need coffee. I need eggs. Um, I need the gym. <laughs> and this, this is so, like, I guess cheesy, but, like, water. I drink water, like, nonstop. Ooh. I think everywhere I get up, I'll, I'll take a bottle of water with me. So, I'm gonna, like, with coffee and water is, like, my my go-to like all the time <laughs> okay okay definitely need water health is important like me i'm trying to stay away from the the soft drinks and things so i've been trying to drink lots of water as well so you know to to keep the skin clear it definitely yes. helps you with the health and keep your skin clear. and i'm all about glowing radiant skin so <laughs> please stay hydrated especially during these times okay all right, fashion girls, it is time to turn those tables. I'm so nervous right now. I have no idea what Sean is going to ask me, but take it away. Okay. All right, so as far as, like, you know, fashion, have, have you ever, like, worked with different photographers before? I never have. I would love to, and it just comes naturally. How did I learn about fashion was my assistant principal. Actually, when I was in high school, she put me on to it because the only designers that I knew were Sao Po, Fubu at the time, and <laughs> those were the ones that I knew about in Gucci. But then she put me on to Vogue magazine, Hopper's Bazaar, and then other continents that have Vogue magazine like Joke Vogue Germany, Vogue uh, Paris, Vogue Milan, Vogue Italy, Vogue, Dutch Vogue. It's so many. And she put me on to that. 
And just flipping through the pages, I'm like, wow, I didn't know it was this much designers or this much fashion. Much and I was just, <laughs> yeah, a whole new world. I was fascinated. And she said, uh uh, you don't pronounce the designer like that. You pronounce it this way. So she taught me how to pronounce the designer's names and everything. And I give her so much credit for that. She said, if you're going to be in the fashion world, you got to be able to know how to pronounce these designers' names. So I finally got it. Finally. I finally got it. Thanks to her. So, no, I've never worked with a photographer, but I would love to. I would love to. I actually had my friend um, who works in makeup draw me on canvas. And it's a very beautiful shot that's hanging up on my wall. I have to post that as well, too, so you guys can see it. So, yeah, that's kind of how I got my start into fashion. Okay. And things like that but i've never That's, worked that actually time. that actually really surprised me that really surprises me you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta get that that gotta be on your list this year <laughs> yes and i i would just love the treatment for me i'm i'm a, an open book i if you want me to do this or wear this i definitely will i i tell my friends this all the time um yo what's gang after you know what it is, money move underscore J. Yeah, we actually I actually did a song with him that's coming out soon too. So I did it's a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. Welcome to the show, Money Move. <laughs> hey Liz. Oh my goodness. How do you feel photography, art, fashion merge to create visually? Ooh, good question. That's a good question. Um, you know what? It's to me it's it's really those things where it's like art to me all around just comes hand in hand. Like it's, it's really kind of like cheesy to say it like that, but everything comes hand in hand. You know, whether even if you're looking at a music video, how important the outfit is, how important the cinematography is in the video as far as like what grabs your attention. Cause you can have a beautiful voice, but you know, obviously if the, the, the fashion isn't given, it's easy to kind of like lose interest. You know what I mean? The cinematography, the, the surroundings, the way the angles are, like all that stuff really does come hand in hand. And honestly, I just started really learning that the past two years, ever since I've been like modeling somewhat. So now I'm looking at old videos and I'm like, oh, I would have did this differently. I would have had lighting here. I would have done that. I would have done, you know, so, so many things. So I'm starting to really understand how everything kind of really comes together. Absolutely. And it's, it's about selling whatever it is that the photographer or the person who has the product wants, wants you to promote, to exactly. make people want to go out and buy it. It's, it's supposed to grab the person's eye. Even for me, um, I love flipping through pictures and time. It's all about capturing. And people are like, well, why do you post fashion all the time? Why do you post this? I, I want you to stop scrolling and, oh, I want what she's wearing. I, I want to yes. grab your eye, you know, because I love inspiration, art, inspiration, beauty. They all go hand in hand. So even for me, when I'm wearing something, a black dress, a red dress, or a brown dress, whatever it may be, there's got to be some sort of backstory and inspiration behind it. But yeah, I don't know what other questions Sean is going to ask me. This talking about something that I love, which is fashion, art, and just that moment, just the artist capturing the moment of what beauty and essence is. Absolutely. So, yeah. Now, I do have one more question. I do have another question for you. So you strike me as a diva in a good way, you know, like the good divas. Um, do you ever leave the house, like, you know, without without being done up? Because I refuse sometimes, like, to not to be seen any type of way. Whether I'm going to the airport, the supermarket, even my sweats are kind of like styled up. So, like, do you do you ever have like any downtime when you go out, or do you always make sure you bring a you know you bring a visual? <laughs> um, my hair. For one thing about me, everybody knows how I love my hair. Um, I have to make sure that my hair is on point when I'm going out. Now, I'll go out without a face full of makeup on, you know, because I have to let my skin breathe. Like I just mentioned in the beginning of the interview, I went on hiatus and I took a break because I didn't really have any interviews throughout this week. Everybody, you know, we had to reschedule and things like that. And so I said, oh, OK, downtime is my leisure time. So I'm going to relax and take this time to take a break. And then when it comes back to do interviews with you guys through this week, um, I make sure that I'm on point. So yeah, um, my downtime, I do go out, I do shop. Yes, I go to Whole Foods <laughs> and Wild World and places like that, but my hair has to be on point. Other than that, I don't have on 
a face full of makeup, I let my skin breathe. I believe, you know, it's, it's nice to enhance your beauty, but it's also nice to celebrate your natural Imagine. beauty as well. You know, and yeah, when I go out, it's fresh face. My hair is on point. I get compliments for the hair and the nails and everything. But as long as I have my hair and nails, I'm good. But yeah, that, that's about it. That counts. <laughs> so your number one favorite. All right, fashion dolls. Singer, that like is Diva. Who'd it be? <laughs> it would have to be Whitney Houston. Because I seen this woman literally in the mirror putting on her lipstick and with a microphone, Bobby is holding the mirror right here and she's putting on her lipstick and get ready to go out on stage. She's just singing backstage and then going all the way out on stage. So yeah, I would have to say Whitney Houston. That's a perfect answer. We love, we love Whitney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. And um, it, I could, I could have easily said Janet. Um, everybody Janet knows that too. I'm amazing. Yes, a major Janet Jackson fan, like Velvet Rope and Control are two of my favorite of her projects that she's done. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Whitney because Whitney, you said Diva, and the first thing that came to my mind, oh, Whitney, that's that's Diva right there. <laughs> because, I mean, this woman literally, I've seen the power go out in the building when she was performing in a concert, and she just gave you a show. No band nothing and still held her vocals the entire time yeah. so fascinating even when she performed the star spangled banner you you'll get goosebumps i don't know who no other diva that can do it like her. none hi nate welcome welcome i live love fashion Okay, we got a question for you. Um, I think that concludes the turn the tables. I don't, I don't know. If, um, Sean has any more questions for me, but they have some questions for you. Hey, what part of your body do you celebrate? Is it beautiful? Honestly, it's it would be my face, and I, I'm only saying that because growing up, it was always I always got made fun of for having like big lips and like my eyes. So it was like always the two things that I was like the most insecure about. So now, when I, even when I shoot, a lot of times they're always complimenting me on my eyes and my lips. So now I'm starting to really kind of enjoy my face. <laughs> and, and I have, as you can see, I have full lips too. I've just learned to embrace it because I'm like, it, it's, it's thank God for a good makeup artist because I'm able to line and shape and contour my eyes and lips whatever way I want to. So makeup artists for, for models and just you know, host, a blogger, whoever, doing photo shoots, they give you what you need to. They're your surgeon. They can change. And then when you take a picture into them, it's like going to the hairdresser or the barbershop. You take a picture to your stylist or whoever, and you you actually want to look like, you want to be the person on the picture. You want to look like the person on the picture. You don't actually want the style, but you want to, you know, be the person on the, the picture. Person. Like, wow. <laughs> yes. So for me, I'm like, okay, I, I can get close to this. So me, I'm all about the visual, the aesthetic. If I see a picture, I will try to duplicate. I'm like, okay, let me try to do my hair like that. Or let me try to do my makeup like that. So again, it's inspiration from either way. Absolutely. I definitely agree. <laughs> Liz says, you both are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> do we have any other questions for myself or Nate. We're talking fashion, beauty, art. Um, this is a little bit in my element because lately a lot has been on acting. I've been interviewing a lot of actors. So this is a little bit of, of my element oh, yeah, as well too with working in fashion. Yeah. It's crazy because it's only become a part of like my life the last two years, but it's so consuming. Like it takes up a lot of time, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I'm, I'm happy with it, but it, it just it shocked me because it was something I never really kind of saw in my future honestly but it works out <laughs> and look at you now if, if you guys go yes and if you guys go to sean's uh instagram a fashion magazine it looks like you're flipping through the pages of hoppers bazaar or vogue or a gq you, it literally <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
fashion dolls do we have any more questions again i'm enjoying this conversation and i hope um i'm gonna break the bombshell right now nate is gonna be on the show actually coming up in may so make sure you guys tune in give me a little more about you and where you see yourself in the next six months to a year from now is that for me we can portray many different personas have you met anyone in person and been disappointed or surprised mm -hmm. um you know it's honestly i think a lot of models sometimes i've met that kind of shocked me I mean, it's not necessarily in a bad way but in a good way like a lot of the people that i was kind of afraid to speak of really kind of um show that they were really nice people and really um, was willing to take me under their wing. So, but yeah, and there's a few, you know, but a few rotten people, but we don't want to give them too much attention. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and it happens. But you just keep moving. You use that faith as a, use that as a stepping stone, and you keep moving. Absolutely. <laughs> And by the way, Liz is also a musician as well, too. So definitely network. And I think Liz is in the New York area. Oh, really? So if you guys are in the New York area, y'all please go and check her out. Definitely. Definitely. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? This is such a great interview. And I see you all are just coming in. Welcome to the dollhouse. We are here with Sean Red. Please go and check out his hit single, all streaming platforms. Welcome, welcome if you're just joining. Modeling takes a lot of inner emotional strength. I celebrate you and your strength. Mm. Thank you. Like, trust me, I, sometimes I really need to hear that. So I really appreciate that. It does. It takes up a lot, you know. It is draining. <laughs> it is definitely draining. And and I know a lot of yes, and I and I know a lot of models after they um do their photo shoots, it's just like wow. Hi, now's the time. My colleague is here. Definitely, please go and give him a follow as well. He says hello to my fashion dolls. That's right. Welcome to the dollhouse. If you're just joining in. Um, I call my supporters my little fashion dolls, and this is the dollhouse. So, um, yes, um, I was just about to say that when models go behind the scenes, when they take everything off after they're done with a photo, she's just like, wow. And once you see the work, the end result is so worth it. All the time. It's worth it. But I know it's a lot of pressure on trying to make sure you get a perfect picture. Perfect when picture. You're, as you're being photographed. And you also want to kind of always step your game up. And I think that that's always in every model's mind. It's like, okay, you've done this, you've done that. So like, what can we do now? Like you practice your facial expressions. You try to take care of yourself leading up to the day to shoot. So it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And once you see the end result, it's just like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's, yeah. It was so worth it. It's, it's you know, um, it's an old, it's an adage that everybody has heard. You know, pressure creates diamonds. Yes, definitely, definitely. And I see um my friend Nate in here, and Nate understands that more than anybody because he's a model as well. So we work with a lot of the same people, and I know how driven he is, and he know. So we both know the pressure of kind of like being exhausted at their shoot and just wanting to eat something. So. <laughs> Because like even you if you shoot for like three hours, yeah, <laughs> even shooting for like three hours, you're saying to yourself like, I just can't wait to eat. <laughs> it's tiring. It was somebody. I think it was Gigi Hadid. She said, "Oh, I'm so ready to get out of this. I just want to go home and eat a cheeseburger." So it, she was walking for one of the fashion shows. She said something. I just want to go home and eat. I just want to eat something. So. I know y'all have to wait, y'all have to hold it in, y'all have to wait. It. And then at the end, you're just like, whew, okay, I can go eat right now. <laughs> exactly. And sometimes I already got my, my meal planned up, especially if I'm in the city, I'm going, I'm like, I'm going to catch one of those trucks, like the halal trucks. Like that's like always my go-to out there to shoot. Like I'll go find one. I'll dedicate five minutes to look for a truck. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And I see all of some more people are coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the dollhouse. If you're just joining in, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Sean Red. Do we have any more questions? We're taking some more questions. This is question hour before we wrap up and conclude. This is such a great interview. I know, likewise. Such a great I felt so comfortable. <laughs> yes. Okay. From Liz, what do you do to detoxify yourself mentally when you do a shoot? You know, honestly, it's the same thing when I'm going in the studio to make music. Like, I like to spend as much alone time as I can. Because, like, that's what puts me in, in the place I need to be in. Because usually when there's too many personalities around me, when, before I walk into a studio, I walk into... So that's, I guess, like, that's, like, the best thing. I know it's, like, really cheesy, but that's usually what I do. Like, I just need to be left alone. I go for a walk. Sometimes I'll get to the city early just to walk around. <laughs> and then I'll go to the studio. And and listen, even for me, when I before I come on and I do my interview, I take a moment by myself and I sit and, hi, you two are beautiful. 317, BS 317. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Music to me is everything. What inspires you in this area? Ooh, honestly, I think it's my experiences and also my friends' experiences. A lot of times when I when I make music, I make it for me and my friends. So it's like if we're all kind of going through the same thing or I'm giving advice to a friend, sometimes I'll turn into a song because like when I'm friends with someone, I'm connected with them. So if they're hurting, I'm hurting. If they're happy, I'm happy. So usually a lot of the times it, it kind of comes from that like that um, emotional connection I have with my friends and my family. And usually me and my best friend, whenever we're going through something, we're going through it at the same time. So it's like that song is kind of for both of us <laughs> in a way. So it's, it's really based on um, like really my, my experiences in, in life, honestly. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's nice to sit back and I tell people this all the time, there's nothing wrong with sitting back and reflecting and basically just like, okay, wow. Even for me, at some of the interviews that I've done, it's just like, wow, this is unreal. Like, I can't believe I just sat up here with Sean Red. I just can't believe I sat up here with so many others. I can't believe I'm sitting up here with 112 or whomever, because I've done so many interviews and people will go back in time and be like, wow, you interviewed this person, you interviewed this person. I'd be like, child, some of the times I don't even remember, but it's nice that people remember it. And the reason why I do it is because I want people to enjoy it and just have fun watching it and just feel empowered like yes. you can go out and achieve anything and honestly in so, platforms, like, music, platforms like this is really important because it gives people who are, are working their way up from the bottom a platform to introduce themselves to different people so it's like the moment you asked me you know i was like yes you know it was like without a doubt because it was to me these these types of connections are important it, it showcases us in places that we're, you know we need to kind of be seen so i thank you for that <laughs> Always, y'all know y'all are welcome to come to the dollhouse anytime. Um, oh, great question, Liz. She wants to know what is your power word? Oh, actually, I just, that's a tough one. My power word, I'm gonna pin that one. I'm gonna pin that, and I want everybody to drop their power word in the comments. Yes, I, thank I, you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. That actually, that's something to really think about. <laughs> Let me see, did the pen go through? Yeah. There we go. There we go. What is your power word? That that's an that's a powerful question just in itself. It really is. It's a tough one. I might really have to come back to that one. What's your power? I know for me, my my power word would be resilience. Re resilience. Um and I say that because I've been through so many obstacles along the way, being black, being a woman, being a trans experience, um, facing colorism, facing misogynoir, facing transphobia. Um, and I've been vocal and I've talked just my page and they understand my output on where I'm at. I'm just like, wow, people finally get me. People understand my voice and why I speak up for so many different things. So I would have to say my power word would have to be resilience um, and being capable of conquering it all. You know, there are days when I don't want to be, you know, 
so-called just this heroin out here speaking up for you know i'm like i have to take time for myself take time for myself reflect as we mentioned previously and just be like okay do you really what makes you happy you sometimes have to sit back and ask yourself these questions and it's just like okay am i doing it to make myself happy or am i doing it to make other people happy and for me i do it because it's what i love it's what is what i'm passionate about i love to talk and i've been that way since i was about eight years old before I even, you know hit the ground it's i knew it was something that i wanted to do in the form of hosting or talking and just you know having a platform like this where people can come on and talk about their projects talk about their life's experiences and i tell people this also shout out to my brother um sky valentine he says this all the time sky says that nobody can tell your story better than you and i am in control of my story so my word would definitely be resilience being able to whatever no matter what it is whether it's not being able to get guests to come on the show whether it's some sort of obstacle or something blocking that not right now just not right now even when i first started on this platform um i had difficulties getting interviews i had difficulties you know keeping an audience and and as people seen my work and my progression throughout the mass vastly response to it people have been so receptive to style by stevie in this platform um my old page got hacked i was devastated i have three thousand followers but i said you know what it's a new year start off on a clean slate there's nothing yeah, wrong back. with beginning with it. and and yeah. shout outs to my girl three times to t she's also a content creator she said this this is your being born again you are literally being born again you're you're being revived again you've you've passed on you 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 did what you did literally was a rebirth process for me to kind of rebrand myself to re to regroup to whatever i wanted to change uh uh change it oh you got a question when you first When was that? You know, it actually, you know, it was um, for a talent show. It was um, the Usher song, Think of You. That was the first time. I think I might have been like 11. I was really young. I was really young. And my voice really didn't have like the lower registers yet. So like I was, I had to kind of maintain like the, the higher parts, but um, it was actually that. That was actually one of my favorite songs. I think. Like whenever I do a show, I always sing that song. That's like that's okay. like my that's like my go to song. <laughs> Again, when when I heard your um single, I thought of Usher instantly. I'm like, okay. I kind of had to double check. I had to look at the picture and look at the single as well. I said, okay, is this Usher? Is this Sean? So. It, it, it was given very much usher and i can tell that he's one of your influences musically definitely like his tone to me was incredible the way he was like able to like um you know project that emotion throughout his music that was always something i always paid attention to and then obviously growing up like i always got compared in tone of our voices so it was like it was always kind of smart and not smart to emulate but to to kind of follow that path in a way where you could still make it your own you know what I mean? So it's like, it's nothing wrong where, and there's a few songs I have where people listen to it and they like, oh yeah, you kind of sound like him in a way. But then there's some where like, they don't hear it at all. But to me, to me, it's one hell of a compliment. Like, I'll take it. And, and the thing I love about you is that you have your own tone, you have your own sound. And a lot of artists out here, um, singers, songwriters, composers, have developed their own sound. Um, I know everybody, and I love these ladies to death. Ariana Grande, Mariah Carey. There's there's definitely been a so, uh, similarity comparison between yeah a, a comparison and similarity between the two because of their their range how they how Ariana is able to hit those high notes how Mariah is able to hit those high notes so definitely and then fast forward they gave us the Christmas single exactly. with Jennifer Hudson and, and the best so, thing about it is yeah. it's like you can you can see where the 
where the homage is being paid to Mariah, but she's still her own person. And like to me, that's what matters. It's like there's nothing new under the sun. Someone's always going to compare you to someone in some type of way. Um, it's just obviously like what Ariana Grande did is that like you try to stay as true to yourself as you possibly can without, you know, copying. Because there's a difference between homage and copying. And I think that Ariana Grande does a good job at paying homage while still being very much Ariana. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And in the world of music, it's about finding your own sound. Even for me in the world of blogging, journalism, or whatever it may be, you haven't hosted a platform. I don't want to be like the the next content creator out here. Um, I try to stay in my own little category. There are some people out here that cover, you know, celebrity pop culture, what goes on in reality shows and stuff like that. I used to do those reviews, but I'm just like, okay, I want to stick to fashion. I want to stick to entertainment. I want to stick to beauty. And I've done it in a way where it's not just, oh, we're going to spill the tea. We're going to spill the tea today. We're going to, let's be mess. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do it in a way where it's in, informative and it's kind of opening people to like, wow, is that why she said what she said? Yeah. Is this why she did what she did? To make people just kind of sit back and reflect and think about it. For those that struggle to be heard or seen, what advice would you like to give? And that's for you. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. I think the best, and I say this, honestly, I get this question a lot. And the, the thing that I always say is, um, it kind of, I guess it ties into my power word, right? Um, hustle. The The thing about me is that um, mm -hmm. I believe in taking advantage of every moment of the day. When someone comes to me and they ask me questions like, oh, Sean, what did you do today? I'm like, okay, I got up at eight. I went to the gym, showered at the gym, went to the, went to the studio, and then I went to work. Or I went to New York to, for a photo shoot, and then I went to work. So it's like, you take advantage of every opportunity. Um, you know, we and again, I understand that everyone has their own struggles and their own things that kind of stand in their way, but if it's just something that you really want, you always find a way for it. You you know, you simply do. And again, it, no matter how hard it may get or how bad that day must is gonna be, you get up early, you you kind of handle it. Um, and I always consider myself to be like a hustler because I'm always on the go. Um, it's funny because if anyone follow me on, on my stories, they'll always see, like, I'm like, I'm up at this time at the gym. Now I'm doing a photo shoot. Now I'm at work. And now I'm here. I'm there. And it's like, I document it so people know that it's not easy. Like, I'm getting up early to try. Like, even when I spoke to you, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do lunch. You, I take advantage of every opportunity. Right? Because at the end of the day, we're when you're an independent artist or someone who's building their own business, you are the boss. So it's like being the boss means you have to be in control of everything until you get to a place where you can put people in a position where they can help you out. But until then, it's hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> exactly. That grind mentality, that, that mindset is what people need, that passion, that perseverance. Exactly. And I know people are like, well, when I did one of my interviews, one of my guests asked me, how do you do it? Like, she goes live every day. And, and I do Monday through Friday. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is that gives me the strength to keep going. Faith, God, my, my mom, my family, um, my friends. It, it's like I get a you know how people love candy, they love sugar, they're sugar addicts, they, they love candy. I, I get a high and I get a rush off of support and love. That That's the abundance for me. That's my high. That's my natural high. And you guys can see it all over me. I'm glowing because I'm happy and I have so much support. It's always good to have a strong support circle around you 100% backing you. That's Absolutely. the natural high and support that you need. And it's funny because if anyone ever watches my videos and kind of go down the timeline, they'll notice that it's the same people, my group of friends. They're my extras. They're my support system. Every time I'm at a show, they come. You know, it's not everyone can make it all at once or whatever, but the one thing I can count on is if I'm doing something, I know I can, you know, look into the audience or I can look beside me and my friends will be there. So I, I definitely understand what you're saying. Like that, that support system is very much needed. And then even if, you know, we meet people online and we're building connections with them, even if they don't have it, it's important to try to, to be that person for a lot of people, you know, because I, I believe that good things do come back to those who, who puts out that love in the world. And, I, you know, and obviously you understand that probably more than most people as well. <laughs> 
Absolutely. 100%. All right, fashion dolls. Any more questions? This is such a good conversation. I hope you guys um, are enjoying this interview. This is a powerful conversation. We talk fashion, we talk art, we talk innovation, we talk passions. And again, the question of the day is posted below um, before we conclude. And that is, what is your power word? I gave mine and Sean kind of elaborated on his. So if you don't have any other questions, I'm going to close out. Well, not me. I'm going to let Sean close out and give some encouraging words to people out there if they want to get into what advice would you give to people who are looking to get into modeling or um singing and songwriting what piece of advice would you give to people who want to follow in your footsteps um you know the, the thing that i had to learn is um be kind uh, but most importantly be fair to yourself um connections matter so much and a lot of times people walk into places and they feel like they're here you can have all the followers in the world but if you cannot deliver and if you cannot, if you're not kind, it will always come back and haunt you. So when you walk into a room, they don't care if you have 5,000 followers or 50,000 followers, your job is to execute and to be kind. <laughs> so like, that's the one thing. And I think that the one reason why I always have this open door is because when I walk into a place, I'm kind and respectful um, and, and fear to yourself, whether you're a singer who's in the studio working with a new engineer or photographers, you have to let people know what your boundaries are and you have to let people know what is your end result in terms of music. So the goal is always to, you know, obviously be proud of what you put out there. So you're, again, it goes back to being the boss. So it's like, in a way you're like, okay, in this shoot, this is what I want to execute. This is what I want. And in this song, this is how I hear it. Um, it's important to speak up for yourself because if you don't, you're not being fair to yourself. So be kind, be fair to yourself. <laughs> are always like my go-to. And the reason why I made my face, I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit because I'm just like, okay, he's saying what I've kind of been saying all this week, and that is humble yourself. It's, it's, it, people don't care how much stature you got, how many followers, um, how famous you are. It's, it's about humbling yourself in the end result. Humble yourself. Never forget where you came from. And for me, the reason why people feel so comfortable and personable on my platform is because I humbled myself. I don't, I don't have such a big head. I've, yes, I've sat with some of the greats here on this platform, but I've humbled myself. I'm still the same old down-to-earth girl from South Carolina, you know, just trying, just a regular person. I, no, you know, I haven't reached T.S. Madison status or Beyonce status yet. I, I wish I could. Shout outs to these ladies. But I've humbled myself. And if I get to sit with these ladies one day, I will still be the same person that you guys see here right now you know the same humble person is you know and that's how you keep those connections and those bonds. so that's all i got i'm not gonna preach <laughs> no definitely oh i love that liz honor your gifts absolutely honor your gifts honor your passions honor everything about yourself and stay true to who you are never forget who you are and where you came from because just as sure as you've gained all of that success all of that that you that the lavishes all of these things the accolades awards just as fast as you gain it you so please so i'm gonna wrap it up there ladies and gentlemen i'm done preaching i'm not gonna preach anymore today tomorrow we have eric and Jareem is going to be joining us tomorrow. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at 4 and 4.30. Special thanks to our very, very incredibly amazing special guest today, Sean Red. And Sean, me. so much on this project. I can't wait to see the visuals for the next, the full, everything. Please keep us posted. Don't be a stranger. And you're welcome to come back to the dollhouse anytime. Thank you so much. You have a great day. You too. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all be safe and I will see y'all tomorrow. <laughs>